So I'm sure you've all heard about YouTube's big uh, advertising boycott, but have you heard the real reason behind it? First, I'm going to talk about where it came from. Then I want to talk about how it's affecting YouTubers. And then third, I'm going to explain the real reason behind it and the real effect it's having and how this is actually a new media versus old media conflict. Supposedly, ISIS had some videos up on YouTube that were getting monetized and the Wall Street Journal did an attack on YouTube and just really went after YouTube. Tell you all these advertisers that are being contacted by the Wall Street Journal, they start saying, oh, we're gonna pull out. So, uh, you know, YouTube starts losing all this millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe even close to a billion dollars worth of ad revenue, depending on how long this, this goes on. The people that are running the ads for these companies that are pulling their revenue, they're being lazy, not using the, the tools that are available to them to prevent these kind of things from happening, to prevent their ads from showing up in places they don't want them to, flagging content that is inappropriate. I, these things were available there. It, to me, it really speaks to a, a huge lack of understanding on how social media works with these advertisers. So now YouTube is scrambling, or Google really, the parent company of YouTube, is scrambling to set up new rules and new ways of dealing with things to try and prevent this kind of thing from happening and it's affecting youtubers because you know not only not only are they losing money because the advertisers are pulling out because that's how a lot of youtubers make their living is based on these ads you know creating content that lots of people watch and so they get lots of ads promoted on their videos and it makes you know a living off of it which in and of itself is probably an issue for is an issue because they are relying solely on a platform that they don't own for their revenue. Not a good idea. But regardless, it's becoming a real issue for a lot of YouTubers. The bigger issue, however, they're changing their policies basically. And they're changing it in a way that is in my opinion, way too far-reaching. It's going to have an effect on more than just people trying to make a living off YouTube. And specifically what I'm talking about are new media news channels, new ways of getting news out there that doesn't rely on the traditional big media. YouTube created an excellent platform for that, and now they've changed their the way they're doing things to where those type of channels are at a big risk of being demonetized which de-incentivizes the people that are creating those channels and that content from creating those channels and content. People have got to have an income and a revenue to live off of, and if they can't do it on YouTube anymore, or they can't do it while focusing on creating that kind of content, they're not gonna do it anymore. They're gonna have to find some other way of making revenue off of it, or they're gonna have to give up on it, find a new job. And this gets to my third point. Was the Wall Street Journal's actual intent to try and destroy the ability of people to get news out without going through the highly controlled old school big media? There is a very real uh, conflict there. The Wall Street Journal wanted to smear YouTube because they know they're competing with YouTube. They know that they're big media friends are competing with YouTube. They know that they are losing revenue and viewership and readership. CNN, MSNBC, even Fox, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, all of these big media outlets have been feeding us fake news forever. They put their own spin on it, their own opinion on it, their own agendas on it to appease their own advertisers and now they're trying to force YouTube to do the same thing. To control YouTube, to squash this competition that has been rising up over the last decade. And they may have succeeded. Because now YouTube is basically saying that any content with references to war or to sensitive issues, controversial issues, things that news channels are supposed to talk about and supposed to get the news out there on it 
even if, and it even says, even if they do not show any graphic images, they can be demonetized. Just like that. Sorry, can't talk about the news anymore on YouTube. Not if you want to get, you know, paid for it. Which means it's no longer a full-time job. It's no longer something that you can invest your full time and energy into trying to dig up the real news, trying to dig up real issues, trying to talk about real issues. Can't do it anymore because you're at risk of not being able to feed your family while you do it. The other side of this is that ad agencies that have traditionally had a lot of control with the big media over what they you know, are able to put up on, on there, want YouTube to bow to them. Whereas YouTube has traditionally been more of a user-focused or user-friendly social media platform where the people that watch the content, police the content, have the ability to flag inappropriate content. And instead of playing by those rules, these media advertising agencies want YouTube to bow to them and play to their rules. Keeping things status quo, you know, this, this disruptive technology, this disruptive social media way that, that young people think and do things, they don't like it because it is a danger to them and their traditional models. And that's exactly what the Wall Street Journal saw, and that's exactly why the Wall Street Journal didn't handle the issue the right way, and instead did the best job they could to try and smear YouTube and make it look worse than it really was. I mean, if you think ISIS is making enough money to wage war off of YouTube ads, there's no way. <laughs> I mean, it's just, that's ridiculous. It takes millions of views a month to be able to make a full-time income off of YouTube. ISIS doesn't have a million views a month. It's just, that's crazy. And all that needed to happen was for one person or a few people to go to those channels and report them and saying this content is inappropriate. Take, out, take down those channels. You know, it's, it's all that there is to it. And then ISIS has to start all over with their YouTube channels trying to generate revenue again. And the one rule that YouTube has implemented would actually help with this a lot. And that is the, the new requirement now to get 10,000 views on your channel, you know, across all your videos, to be able to be monetized. Because by then, YouTube can look at it and say, nope, we don't like your content, we're not going to monetize it. Or yes, your channel is acceptable or will monetize it. And then advertisers have the ability, already had the ability, and still have the ability to go in and say, I don't want this kind of content. I don't want my ads on this kind of content. I don't want to be viewed here, or I want to be viewed over here. They have that control already. They're just being lazy. Their, their ad agencies are just being lazy and not taking advantage of that and making that happen. Thank you. Wall Street Journal for turning a small issue into a big one and destroying the destroying the new media careers of many YouTubers. It's already happened. A lot of YouTubers are already lost, you know, thousands of dollars, lost their month's income, and are, are sitting there wondering what to do next. The advertisers. <laughs> I think they're gonna get hit by this too. The people who took their money out, those advertisers are not getting revenue from making ads anymore. The companies that are not advertising anymore are gonna lose customers because they're losing their top of mind uh, recognition. People aren't thinking about them because they're not seeing their ads. And I would even say, hey, I'm gonna find a list. I, I know there's lists out there on which advertiser, or which companies have stopped their advertising on YouTube. I'm gonna link that below. Boycott those companies. Tell them you don't like what they did by hitting them where it hurts. And 
don't go buy anything from them this month. Let them know. I don't like what you did. You overreacted. You're going to pay for it. Those companies and advertisers, they'll be back. I mean, YouTube's bending over backwards to get them back. It's unfortunate that some of the things that YouTube is doing to bend over backwards for them, it, it's, to me, that's a bit extreme on YouTube's part or Google's part. But, you know, we can all vote with our wallet to make sure that we know that we didn't like what they did. It's hurting people all over the place. They need to get with the times and start doing the better, more efficient ways of doing things and be more truthful, more open. That's what social media is all about. And if you want to help my, me out, give me a like, share this video, see if I can get to 10,000 views so I can be monetized. Peace.